everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com, and today we're going to get 80s with it. We're going to the 80s. Uh, and we're going to do some uh, Kid Mograph or James White from Signal Noise inspired uh, 80s goodness, some retro fun action. Uh, and we're going to recreate this. So if you're not familiar with uh, Signal Noise or Kid Mograph, they just make some really crazy, amazing uh, 3D or 2D and 3D art. Uh, James White is more known for his 2D illustration work but also oozing, dripping with uh, some 80s retro goodness. Stay rad. Check this stuff out. So that's SignalNoise.com. We also have Gustavo, also known as Kid Mograph. And a lot of this stuff has really uh, inspired me. And, uh, and you know, I was like, I want to I do my best uh, Gustavo Kid Mograph impression. And I was saying this, was, this is how I felt last week in Vegas. Just like, oh, felt like crap. But I'm here, I got my voice back, uh, so let's get started, let's break down this scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build the scene in uh, Cinema 4D, then I'm going to uh, go ahead and bring it into After Effects and apply some like VHS, old VHS uh, filters and stuff on that, uh, and... Uh, bring it into Photoshop and we're going to make a GIF out of it. So we're going through the whole entire process here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my little floor grid. So to do that, I'm just going to go and grab a plane. I'm going to make this fairly large. So something like 8,000 by like 4,000. Don't need any segments. So I'm going to get rid of them. And uh, I'm actually going to apply the grid as a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a texture here. I'm going to go into interactive render region here just so we can see what's going on. And actually, this is default. Uh, this is a default composition here. And I'm going to build this at 800 by 600. And I like building it uh, with this because this is ultimately going to be a GIF or GIF. Uh, I say it's GIF because it's graphics interface. So that's a G. So it's GIF. Uh, and this is the format, this is the width and height that Dribble uses. So I like posting a lot of my GIFs to Dribble. Uh, so I'm going to use this kind of width and height. So you can use your own. You can do, you know, your 720, whatever you want to do. Have fun with it. Uh, but let's go ahead. Let's, uh, let's turn on our luminance. We're going to use some luminance and we're going to load up a grid. So I'm going to go to surfaces. I'm going to go to tiles. We've got a grid going on on our plane. Let's actually turn our color off for now and go into our tiles and we're going to make our grout color, little grout area here. We're going to make it into some kind of like hot pinkish magenta kind of thing going on, whatever color that is. And we're just going to make all these other colors. I think I can copy and paste this. Just going to make them all black. Uh, and you're going to see that this is fairly blurry and the blurriness now if you're not familiar and this used to screw me up a lot is the grout width and the bevel width width you'll know that if you bring the grout width to one you'll still see that we have a fairly large grid and that's because of our bevel width the bevel width basically basically like blurs the uh, grid there so i'm going to turn off the bevel and when i want sharp edges like a sharp grid i'm just going to bring this bevel width bevel width all the way down to like 0.1 so we're going to get a super sharp grid now and we'll just bring this grout width to two still got the sharp edges uh and let's bring the global scale to like 20 so we got this really nice grid going on uh but you can see that it just kind of keeps going and just kind of just stops abruptly so what i want this to do is kind of fade out in the distance and what i'm going to do to recreate that kind of fall off is to create a layer shader grab my layer shader and then what I'm going to do is apply <clears throat> uh, uh, for now and make that uh, multiply I'm going to multiply that on top of the tiles I'm just going to invert this for now and you're going to see that what this does is it just kind of uses the Fresnel angle to kind of fade off 
the tiles. So we can go in here and say like, all right, well maybe that's a little bit too much. We can bring some of this back. And just kind of adjust this to whatever kind of fall off we want. I'd say that looks pretty good right there. Uh, and then for the, uh, like the specular, we can give this fairly subtle kind of purplish, maybe dark purplish specular there. And we'll, we'll really see that pop uh, once we start adding some lights and stuff to the scene. Uh, so now we got, we got our grid so far. Let's just go ahead and rename this texture grid. There we go. And we're going to create our mountains because for some reason, 80s stuff needed mountains in it all the time. So we're going to make our 80s mountains. We're going to grab a landscape object. We're going to bring it right there. We're going to move it all the way back. Just zoom out here. There's my grid. It's my plane. I'm going to move it all the way to the back of the plane. Make it fairly wide and fairly deep back there. Make it like 1200. But you know me, I like my even numbers. Let's do like 1500 as a height. And then for the size, let's see. Let's even this out to something like 5500. Make that wide enough. Adjust our camera, make sure this is looking good. So that's pretty high. Move this down. Uh, and what we can do is like bring down the width and height segments or the depth segments uh, just to bring less geometry. We can also start changing around uh, a lot of stuff here. Uh, one of the things that is going to change a lot is the the seed. So we're going to get totally different kind of mountains depending on how of what the seed is. And you can also adjust how rough uh, this stuff is by adjusting the furrows, uh, something like that. So we're getting a little more rocky. Uh, we're going to go maybe a little bit like uh, low poly on this uh, and get some like triangulation. So what I'm going to do is uh i guess just remove the fong angle just gonna remove it so now we get this chunky uh kind of stuff going on so we get the really chunky polygons uh and then just to add a little bit more triangulation a little bit more interesting stuff to the landscape i'm just gonna apply a polygon reduction and what that's gonna do is like low polyify our uh mountain there and that looks pretty cool um and then what I want to do is grab this landscape and I want to have some kind of outlines or grid applied to this as well. But instead of using a texture, I'm just going to go ahead and make it a copy of this by using an instance. And uh, so here's our instance right here. Whoop. Uh, and I'm going to use this instance uh, to create our outlines. And I'm going to create the outlines by using an atom array. I'm going to drag that landscape object in there. And so now we got our atom array uh, creating lines. I'm just going to create the, I'm just going to change the cylinder radius and sphere radius to about three. So this is going to get us some kind of cool outlines. Let's apply some textures here. Uh, so this will be our mountain texture. Mountain. And let's apply that. Boop. Uh, and this is going to be like fairly uh dark like fairly dark texture uh maybe with a little bit of like bluish hue something like that and then we can bring the default specular uh, and make this kind of bluish as well we want it to be fairly dark and again we're probably not going to see much until we start adding lights and stuff uh but that's just like that'll be our base for our mountain and we'll tweak it later uh, and then for the mountains, like outlines, we'll apply that to the atom array. And this will be more bright. Um, we'll see a little bit more specular happening. This will be like a lighter blue, maybe. There we go. We can see some outlines. We got the basis of our grid and we got the basic uh, setup of our 
uh, mountain here. So the nice thing is, is I can go ahead and change the landscape. And since this is an instance, uh, you know, it's changing both things. So we got that kind of flexibility and I always like to, you know, keep things very nice and neat and organized like that. Um, so let's see, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and add that like shiny cone, that like chrome cone we had in there. Let's go ahead, add our, where is it, where is it? There it is, there's our cone. And we're just gonna turn it upside down. So we're gonna make this orientation negative Y, so it flips it upside down. Let's uh, go ahead and move this back. Let's uh, get our composition working here. I wanna have like the mountains in the background. There's our cone. Uh, and I want to make it a little round, so just so the chrome reflections and stuff will have this nice little edge to kind of bend on and make it a little bit more interesting. So here's the cone. Let's texture this bad boy. We're gonna, and of course, you know, in the '80s, everything was chrome. Everyone loved mountains. Everyone loved chrome. Everyone climbed chrome mountains and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so for, we, we don't want to use like a reflectance and add a reflection or anything like that. How we're going to build the Chrome is actually by activating the environment channel. And we can easily apply some like cheesy 80s Chrome by uh, just going into the environment channel, choosing gradient. Let's go ahead and apply this material to our cone. And we can even rename this to cone chrome. And... Uh, Basically, we can have a little get a little creative in here as far as how we want our chrome to look. So right now, I'm just kind of dragging uh, and making new chips and creating like a cool chrome gradient here. Uh, let's see. And the and the key to this is just kind of you know having some very sharp fall offs like this, like bringing this little diamond all the way to the right, so there's less. Uh, space to interpolate between the black and the this grayish color. So just by doing this, we have some pretty nice uh, chrome going on. So 80s. Uh, and you can see that uh, right here we had this odd edge right there. And that's just because we had uh, this going from solid black to solid white. So you kind of want to have that mirror a little bit. We'll make this just black on this side. That's looking pretty good. Uh, and since we're kind of doing this the cheap way, we can kind of map this so we have like nice highlights on either side so we can kind of see uh, what's going on here. So I think this is looking pretty good. Pretty chrome-tastic. Maybe bring a little bit more highlight to that side by moving these chips over. So you can kind of see what I'm saying where you can adjust all this. Um, so now we can actually go into the, uh, the actual environment channel itself. And we can start like tiling this if we wanted to. Uh, so we can add more of those little gradient knots in there. Or less. You can kind of change how this is mapped on your object, but I think I like it just the way I set it up. So that's your uh, Chrome, doing it the cheap way in the environment channel. So now it's not going to really reflect anything else in the scene, which is fine because most of that cheesy 80s Chrome, like computers couldn't do reflection like that. So we're not going to worry about it, right? So now what we can do is... um. Let's go ahead and add those little uh, little holes, those little slats in our cone. So right now, let's see, I think I want this to be a little bit wider, maybe a little bit taller, something like that. And of course, I got to even out these numbers because I hate random numbers. Need them nice and flat and even. Uh, a little, I'm a little crazy, a little crazy because of that stuff. Uh, and we're going to go and just grab some cubes. And we're going to use these cubes to kind of bool or cut the holes in our 
little cone guy. So there's one. There's one cube. Uh, and why I like to use a cube is because it's got less segments, and uh, can, when you have too much geometry, sometimes that can uh, cause problems with bools. And usually bools are kind of frowned upon, but you know what? They work just fine for some instances. So I'm going to place the cone in the bool in the cube, and you're going to see right there we got our little hole in our cube. We got that little slat. So now we need to make a whole bunch of them. So we're just going to go ahead and grab a cloner. We are going to go into our cloner and turn off fix clone. So they're going to be back in place. And I need to keep in mind that I'm going to be animating this. So I need to make this kind of start down here and add more of these cubes. There we go. So now I can kind of just animate it up and down. And that's basically our little uh, cube guy our little cone we can add a lot more of these if we want so you can kind of figure out how you want your cuts to look you can have a lot more cuts like that and that looks kind of cool uh, or not you can have way thicker caps so uh, right now this kind of has no texture on the cuts the, the chrome's only on the cube bits uh, but not on the inside here. That's just gray. So you can either put the chrome texture on the cloner and that makes it all white or we can put like a darker color on there so you, so it's way more pronounced that there's a hole in there. Uh, so you can do whatever you want. You can have a, a texture there that has a little bit more specular. And again, we need to start putting some lights in here so all that stuff uh, works. So uh, let's now put in a background and what I'm going to do is just create a background like a uh, background gradient that's very 80s looking with a lot of uh, bright neon colors and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and need a gradient. Let's apply this to our background object. Make sure it's facing the right direction. So we need up and down. And we'll make this gradient go from black to like this magenta, this hot pink magenta. And it will slowly go into like a light purple and then a dark purple. And then maybe just totally black. So something like that. And we need to adjust these knots so we can actually see. And since our composition is kind of halfway, I'm going to move all these up so we can actually see that uh, magenta E bit there. There we go. Seeing a little bit more of that as this goes to like past 50%. So right there, that's not above 50. And now we can see it. So that's looking pretty nice. Let me make this a little bit more orangish or pinkish. There we go. Just get rid of that gradient. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. All right. So that's our background. Uh, and actually, what we can do is, uh, what I did was I just Googled some galaxy stuff, uh, some galaxy images, and I found a really cool one. Uh, I'm just going to add that via this layer uh, and this image I found. Uh, it's just called Space Stars. I just literally Google Googled it and I got this really cool uh, galaxy image right here. I think it's going to work very well. And I'm just going to multiply that. Actually, let's screen it on top. So now I got this really cool uh, galaxy thing. And we can bring down the opacity of that. And actually what I want to do is move this up a little bit, this image of the galaxy up a little bit so I can see more of the cloudy galaxy-ish stuff, nebulas, whatever that stuff's called. Uh, and how, to, how I'm going to do that <clears throat> is go ahead and create a folder, put the uh, stars uh, thing in the folder, and that's going to kind of blow out the... Uh, the, uh, the the blending mode. So 
So I'm going to need to reset that on the folder level. So I'm just going to go screen on the folder. And now what I can do when this is in its old folder, I can apply a transform effect to just that layer and just move that up. So now you see I have more of that like galaxy nebula -y stuff in there. So that's looking pretty cool. That's looking much better. I got more of the detail of the cloudy nebula galaxy stuff, whatever that is, stardust. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. So now let's go ahead and start adding some lights. Add some lights to the scene. And this is going to be my background light. And this is going to be Omni. It's going to be a little bluish here. And what I'm going to do is move this light source all the way to the back by the mountains here. And I'm going to go and make this have a little fall off here. Basically what I want this light to do is just kind of cast a little bit of a hint of light back in the mountain so you can make out a little bit of the detail of that mountain range back there. So we're getting some really nice uh, highlights on the, the outlines here. And crank this up. A little bit so we get a little bit blown out maybe. I just want to get some light there so we get some of the details and that just goes to black on the edges there. Uh, now what I now what I want to do is uh, go ahead and create a camera. So right now everything's looking fairly flat, kind of boring because we need that extreme uh, like angle or perspective. Uh, so what we're going to do to do that is crank up the sensor size to 50 and bring down the focal length to like 15. So we've got this extreme uh, like depth here. Uh, so now that I have this here, uh, I'm going to start have to start moving some stuff around. So I'm going to move this cone back because uh, basically what I want to do is have the mountains in the back and the cone kind of more in the foreground. And this is where we can start going back uh, into our landscape object and be like, all right, well, maybe we need these landscape, this landscaped object to be a little bit taller so we can actually see it behind the cone. We need to make sure we're moving both the landscape object and the instance up that has the atom array. There we go. Just move it up a little bit. So we want to see a little bit of the mountains and this cone. So there we go. Uh, and now let's go and so now we got some lights in here. Let's go back into our very boring grid texture now uh, because we have like no reflection, no nothing on it so far. And we can add like a, a color channel here and make this kind of dark blue. And now we get some more like uh, color from the specular channel here. Uh, actually purple look pretty good. Now we're getting a little bit more color in that floor area. And what we can do to add a lot more uh, hotness to it is add some reflection. And now we're going to start to get, uh, you know, reflections of the mountains, reflection of that uh, chrome cone. But I don't want like 100% reflection. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just kind of uh, make this additive. And I'm going to go to the for now, go to dielectric. And choose the preset to glass because I just want this to kind of act like glass. And you can see that the uh, the reflection is going to be a little bit more muted. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of the specular and actually want to bring more reflection in there. I want to really see a lot more of that uh, that mountain in the back there. Uh, and that's looking pretty cool so far. And what we can do is just kind of go in here and make some roughness. And that's looking pretty good. So that kind of adds some really nice noise, kind of degrades it, degrades the quality a little bit. Uh, and let's see. So now what we can do is I want to see more of this environment, this star environment in uh, my reflection. So what I can do is go and grab a HDRI studio. 
And I'm just going to use, instead of an HDR file, I'm just going to grab that same space uh, image there. And I need to turn off the floor, turn off the background. So now I just have the really cool star background reflecting as like an HDR. So this is looking really cool. We got this really nice detail or reflection from this background here. And with that uh, kind of crappy quality uh, reflection blur, it's actually looking not too shabby. Like I just want a little bit of that degradation quality going on. And uh, that's looking pretty good. And we get a lot more sense of the, a uh, lot more like of this negative space of the uh, mountains kind of uh, at the bottom there. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, I think one thing I want to do before I start animating or anything like that is to go back to the landscape and start messing around with like the polygon reduction. Maybe I want more of these outlines or maybe... Uh, add more segments in here. There we go. Maybe something more like that. It's kind of just whatever you want to do. If you want more of those little grid lines or less. Uh, but I just like the idea that you have these like triangulated lines and it's not like a perfect grid or anything like that. We actually move out a little bit more. Move our cone up like this and uh it's kind of want to make more of the grid kind of really fade off and really get that uh, extreme angle let's see here move back and move this cone back and we can just make this landscape object a little bit bigger. So like with all this tweaking, because I know I like to tweak and tweaking is good because you want to push your design to the limits and make it as good as you possibly can. So always being able to make sure that when you make one change on one, you don't have to keep making change on the other. It's always kind of important. Just move this up. There we go. Cool. All right. I'm done tweaking the mountains. The mountains look good. Uh, what I can do is kind of tweak the light maybe a little bit more. You push this back. I just want like a hint of light coming behind the mountain here. Let's see. Uh... I think the reason why I'm not seeing too much is because the mountain has a very dark uh, specular. We're not seeing too much. So I'm going to go into my specular channel here. You know, this is too dark of a blue. Okay, I think that's better. A little bit better. And I want to really be able to make out those outlines so I can pump up the color with that as well. And increase the specular strength so we get more of that outlines and then more of the outlines uh, reflected onto the ground there cool 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 we got all the major things that happened in the 80s we have grid we have mountains we have galaxies we have chrome we have every element of the 80s uh, so now, uh, let's see, we can, uh, let's just add one more light, uh, to the scene. I'm just going to duplicate that background light and this will be the cone light. I just want like more of a magenta E, uh, I'm saying magenta E a lot. I'm sorry. It's a word though. Look it up. Uh, I'm just going to move this right below, like right behind where this cone is just to give this a nice little highlight like right there. So that looks pretty cool, right? Move it right back there. And so it just adds a nice little splash of the pink. See, I didn't say it again. The pink color uh, to our scene. So we can go in here and actually I like this kind of purple um, 
specular in our cone right there, but say that's a little bit too hot, I can kind of go in here and uh, that's just this the cube, so the part of the cube that's kind of cut out there, I can go and change that. Uh, and I can change this stuff too. No, I don't want to create new object. I want to hide new edges. And create phone breaks. Yep, that looks good. Uh, so I can actually go in here and just make this the inner cone texture just because that might be a little bit too much color. Apply that to the cloner and we can like tone down the brightness there inside the cone. Since we added that light in there, it's a little bit too much. Now we're just kind of bringing that back a little bit. Now we just have like a really subtle purple glow and I think I like that and think I'm digging that. Okay, so let's save this really quick. 80s, uh, save, and uh, let's see. Now we can start animating. So the things we're gonna animate in here, first thing I wanna do, make sure I kind of align everything. I don't want any X value, I don't want any zero, or I don't want any rotation in, the, in there, so I just want it straight on, boom. Nice and centered, like so. And let's start animating stuff. So this is gonna be animated GIF. So just for compression's sake and just keeping the uh, file limit down, we're just gonna make this a 30 second loop. So just one second, everything's gonna kinda loop. And the only thing we're really gonna do is just have uh, these cuts, these little uh, slats, animate up and we're gonna have the grid kind of move forward. So we're going to uh, animate the grid by just animating the offset here. So I'm gonna create a keyframe at frame zero, go to frame 30. Now this is gonna be the tricky part. Uh, and sometimes it helps to go into your material, go to the editor, and I don't think this is really gonna help that much, but sometimes you can turn the texture preview side to no scaling and that could sharpen it sometimes, but that's really not working. Uh, but one thing we can do is just go to our editor display. Instead of using combined, let's just show the luminance. And that's going to blow out like the reflection and, and stuff like that so we can more clearly see the grid. And uh, let's go. And now we can try to eyeball this. And there's no, <laughs> like, this is kind of like very unscientific, but so we want the grid to go forward and right now I'm hit, I'm holding down the option key so I'm going by like hun uh, hundredths decimal place or tens sorry uh, I'm just moving this and gonna try to match this so uh, like this let's see if that works so I'm gonna hit the keyframe and I'm gonna grab both these keyframes and I don't want any interpolation so right now this is kind of ease in uh, I'm just going to grab both keyframes and just say, no, I need linear interpolation uh, and make sure that I select both of them. I just selected the one, so there we go. So now, actually, that looks pretty looped. Got a little tiny hitch, though, I think. I'm going to try to just nudge this last keyframe because I think they kind of overlap. Yeah, they're pretty close. You don't want overlapping keyframes. So let's uh, just nudge this back one tenth. And I think I just made another ease again, and I did, and actually present, uh, prevent that. So every time you set a new keyframe, it's gonna totally blow out the interpolation that you set. I'm gonna change that by going into uh, my project settings here by hitting Command D. Go to key interpolation and clicking on overdub. And what that's going to do is just retain your interpolation uh, the way you want it to. So when I set a new keyframe, it's not going to blow out the linear interpolation. It's going to keep, uh, keep that. So I'm going to select this keyframe again, go to linear. And now, let's see here. I think that it's got a little tiny hitching it maybe, and that just might be because of this texture quality is kinda pretty. Let's just say that loops. Let's say for now that loops. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's animate the, animate the, uh, yep, this guy. 
the little slats here. So same thing, I want to start at a position where I can kind of tell what my looping point's going to be. So like right there, where I can still see the top cap here, uh, the top of the cone, and I'm just going to keyframe the cloner Y. So this is going to go up. So basically, I just want to make this so we're right there. So maybe one before that, because we don't want overlapping keyframes. I'm going to get it just before that point. And let's see if that works. So right now we have that spline interpolation. So again, I need to select both of my keyframes here. Uh, go right there. Turn this to linear. Go to this one. Make it linear. And let's see. And now I just screwed something up there. See, did I just blow out one of my keyframes? Let's see what I did. So that goes 140. I think I didn't move it enough. So let's go here. I barely moved that sucker. Okay, let's move this a lot more. I accidentally set keyframes for all these guys. That's no good. Let's just get rid of these. Just need it in the Y. Uh, and let's go to right about there and see what that looks like. Let's see what we got. So now we got it moving a lot more. And since we had overdub turned on, this should stay linear, but just in case. So that's actually moving too fast. That's looping, but I think that's going too fast. When we have two things at the same speed, it doesn't look too interesting. So I'm going to kind of slow this down so we have a little bit of contrast. So maybe, let's see, let's see if that works. Oh, and I did it again. I did it again. All right, let's move this one then. So this will be down. Oops. Guess I got to move this one. Move this up to there. Boom. Okay. There, yeah, that. I like that speed a lot more. And that looks like it loops. So we have one that we have the grid moving faster. We have the cone moving a little bit faster than that. And it looks pretty looping. Good job, guys. So that wasn't like scientific at all, but just kind of like tr tips and tricks of how to line things up correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that little trick that Cooking Show does and put this in the oven and come out with a brand new render. So I'm going to render this uh, and we're going to jump into After Effects and apply our... Uh, let me just uh, do the ram uh, interactive render region here. So we got everything looking good. We're ready to render. Uh, and then I'll meet you guys inside of After Effects. And we're going to make this look like old and have a nice VHX or VHS kind of look and feel to this. So I'm going to put this in the oven and boom, this is going to be already rendered.